My band plays in all sorts of places, clubs and concert halls and outdoor stages, and every place has its own challenges that have to be mastered. As a crane operator, you need to know how to work different areas too, like the dock of a ship. And like a band, you also need to know how to handle special circumstances. Learning and following these procedures will set you on your way to becoming a star. This is the last of a three-part series on the safe operation of shoreside container gantry cranes. In this program, we will go into greater detail on how to work a ship. You'll also learn how to handle special containers and how to use special gear. Safety procedures and guidelines to follow during unusual operating conditions and emergencies will be covered. Finally, you'll learn how to end your shift properly. Sometimes my band will play in an arena that requires special preparation. And to be successful in these situations, we have to find out how the arena is set up and how we can use it to our best advantage. Ships are a type of arena. They require special preparation, and you have to know how to operate the crane in this area. First, crane operators should know how containers are stowed on a ship. Stowage refers to the method of placing containers aboard a ship in a manner that allows them to be discharged as easily as possible. As you've learned, containers can be stowed on the weather deck or below in the ship's hold. The arrangement of containers on a ship is planned in advance. This information can be found in the ship stowage plan, which is prepared and transmitted to the ship and to terminal personnel. A position code system or notation to identify each container's location is shown in the stowage plan. The plan covers every on-deck and below-deck container position. Sequence plans are created by the terminal operator from information provided in the stowage plan. The sequence plan determines the appropriate order for discharging and loading containers to maximize efficiency. Sequence plans may be distributed to gang foremen, hatch tenders, and signal persons. The signal person, in turn, will be in voice contact with the crane operator to let him or her know what containers need to be discharged from or loaded on the ship and the proper order of that operation. Before crane operations can begin, certain procedures are necessary to prepare the containers. Containers stowed on deck are secured with lashing gear, such as lashing bars, rods, turnbuckles, and bridge fittings. Lashers must remove bars and other securing devices before the designated containers may be discharged. Semi-automatic twist locks or other inter-box connectors are placed in each of the four corner fittings of the containers to secure containers to each other. Twist locks are unlocked in order to permit container hoisting. When you have gantried and trolleyed to the container's location, first be sure to verify the container's securing gear has been removed or unlocked before you attempt to lift it. If it is not fully disengaged when hoisted, you may damage the spreader or container. Before lifting, also check to make sure lashing gear has not been placed on top of the container. Falling objects could cause a serious injury to workers below. Lower the spreader carefully onto the container. You may not have room to use all four of the spreader's flippers, so you'll need to be precise when landing the spreader. Once you have aligned the spreader and engaged the twist locks, lift the load, making sure it is high enough to clear any obstacles in the container's path. After you have cleared the container stack, trolley back over the dock to land the container on a chassis or the dock. Follow the normal procedures for landing a container to the dock or chassis. 
Efficient movement is one of the keys to productivity. While working a ship, the object of safe and productive container handling is to trolley and hoist the spreader in an arched path as you bring the container over the dock. Never lift a load too high, but always lift it high enough. An extra foot of lifting height equals two feet of hoist movement, because you will also need to lower the container that extra one foot. The extra hoist takes time. These procedures will become easier with hands-on practice. When loading a container on the deck of a ship from the dock, you must follow certain procedures. Lift the container to be loaded on the ship about four feet above the dock to allow twist locks to be placed in each of the bottom four corner fittings. When you get the signal, hoist the container to the appropriate traveling height. If you're loading the first tier of containers on the deck, sometimes it may not be necessary to put twist locks in the bottom corner fittings of the container prior to hoisting because securing devices, also known as deck fittings, may already be in place on the deck. Now you can gantry, if needed, and trolley to the on-deck position where the container will be landed. Once you're in position and it is clear, lower the container to the tier. It is important that you land the four twist locks in the corner fittings of the container you are landing on in order to trigger the locks. The container should square with the rest of the tier corner to corner. Proper positioning is essential since a misaligned container can affect the positioning of the containers above and beside it. When the container is landed, the twist locks will automatically lock into the corner fittings of the container below. Release the spreader, making sure that the spreader's twist locks have been disengaged before lifting. Raise the empty spreader and trolley back for your next container. Hatch covers are used to cover and seal hatches, which are the openings to the holds of the ship. They are lashed securely to the deck to keep water from entering the hold. Depending on the ship, hatch covers may be opened automatically, or you may need to lift them with the crane. If you're lifting by crane, you will generally use the crane's spreader. However, on some ships, special fixtures must be installed between the spreader and the hatch cover so they can be lifted. You must be certain that hatch covers are unlashed before you attempt to lift them. Otherwise, you may damage the spreader or crane. Also, hatch covers should be clear of any loose lashing gear which may fall below. At your terminal, a foreman or supervisor may notify gang members about removing hatch covers, or you may need to contact the foreman or supervisor yourself. Hatch covers are stacked in a designated area of the dock where they will not interfere with work, usually in the back reach area under the crane. Before hoisting any hatch covers, make sure this landing area on the dock is clear and that gang members have been informed. When possible, hoist and land the largest hatch cover and stack smaller ones on top to minimize obstructions on the dock. When handling a hatch cover, Lift slowly until all of the slack is out of the hoist rope and the load is fully suspended to avoid shock loading the crane and lifting gear. Be aware of containers in adjacent areas when lifting or discharging hatch covers to ensure that the suspended hatch cover does not bump into them. When replacing hatch covers, be sure to put them back in proper order. Hatch covers are marked and are not interchangeable. For instance, hatch covers may be marked 54C, 54S, 54P. 54C means the hatch cover fits number 54 hatch, center. 54S means 54 hatch, starboard. And 54P means 54 hatch, port. Containers in holes are generally stowed in cell guides, which keep containers aligned. This design effectively stabilizes and secures the below deck container stowage and eliminates the need for lashing gear. When discharging containers from the hold, 
trolley to the position above the container to be hoisted. Make sure that the spreader is extended or retracted to the proper length of the containers you will be hoisting before you lower the spreader into the hole. Flippers must always be up and remain up while working in below deck cell guides. Lower the spreader carefully and engage the container as you normally would. As you hoist, make sure the spreader and hoist ropes do not contact or rub against the edge of the hatch to avoid damaging them. When hoisting a load or empty spreader out of a ship's hold, make sure that the head block, spreader, or container does not get caught under the side of the hatch. Keep hoist ropes vertical. Never pull a load sideways. Lift the load high enough to clear any obstacles and land the container in the normal manner. Know what you are lifting out of the hold. Be sure that you're not lifting two 20-foot containers instead of one 40-foot container. If you're not sure about the load or cannot see it, ask for help. When landing containers in the hold, lower them carefully. Make sure the container is level and not tilted as it is placed in a cell guide. Too much trim could cause the container to jam in the guide. As the container is set into position, do not let out too much slack in the hoist wires because this can also cause the spreader to jam in the cell guides. After the container is properly landed, disengage the twist locks and carefully raise the spreader. If it gets hung up in a cell, do not raise or lower the spreader until you are instructed to do so by the personnel assigned to free it. Do not try to force the spreader from the cell. Once the spreader has been hoisted above and cleared the hatch and all containers on the deck, trolley to the next container. Following safety precautions while working a ship is very important. Whether you're working the deck or the hold, watch out for lashers in areas near where the crane is loading or discharging containers. They should be working at least two container rows away from the row you're working. Similarly, you must watch out for people on the dock and on the ship's deck walkway that is closest to the dock. Make sure ground personnel assist you when your load is in a place that you cannot see. These blind spots can be a safety hazard if you are not paying attention. Be aware of the smoke from the ship's stack to keep smoke from being a visibility hazard. Never carry loads or containers over the heads of people. Twist locks could fall out of the container's lower corner fittings. Water or ice could fall from the container or container components damaged at sea could break loose and fall. Also, never leave the operator's seat or the controls of your crane while a load is suspended. Knowing how to work a ship safely will protect you and your co-workers and will make your team more efficient. Contact appropriate personnel if any situation hinders your ability to work safely. Every now and then I want a song to sound a little different, so I'll use a special instrument. Same goes for you. Occasionally you'll come across special containers. While most of the procedures for working with special containers are the same as for lifting standard containers, additional precautions are often necessary. Refrigerated containers, commonly called reefers, are used to keep goods at a set temperature. Reefers stowed on deck or below deck are usually plugged into the ship's power with an electrical cable. In order to reach these cables, the container must be placed either doors aft or doors forward as required by the ship. Before lifting a reefer, make sure you know that cables have been unplugged and are properly stowed. Also, workers who unplug reefers must be out of the way before you hoist the container out of the cell guides. They should be no closer than two containers away from the one you are going to lift. Tank containers are used to carry many types of liquid cargo, including chemicals used in manufacturing and food products being shipped in bulk. 
Tank containers are considered dynamic loads because the liquid inside can easily shift, especially if the tank is only partially full. Move such a container slowly at first to see how the tank handles. You may need to move slowly and carefully throughout the entire lift. Containers carrying hazardous materials will have hazmat placards on all four sides of the container. You will probably not be able to read these placards from high up in the cab, so it's important that ground personnel inform you of the material you are handling. Use extra caution when handling any hazmat container. Over height cargo, which is cargo that would stick out from the top of an open top container, requires special handling. When lifting overheight cargo, an attachment called an overheight spreader is needed. The procedures for attaching the overheight spreader vary depending on the equipment used. Your local training will teach you the procedures for attaching the overheight spreader and working with overheight cargo at your workplace. Flat racks are also used for overheight cargo, but may be used for transport of objects that are over eight feet wide as well. Flat racks can be 20 or 40 feet long. Flat racks are secured to the deck or on top of other containers, just like any other container. However, containers may not be placed or stacked next to a flat rack on one or more sides if the object in the flat rack protrudes into the adjacent area. Besides flat racks, other containers might require special placement procedures. These include open tops, rag tops, platforms, half height, and high cube nine foot six inch containers. With a specially designed spreader, Two 20-foot containers may be engaged and lifted at the same time. Known as twin 20s, these containers are positioned end to end and lifted with a special spreader that has eight twist locks, one for each corner of the two 20-foot containers. Before hoisting, select the 40-foot position for the spreader. Next, lower the center four twist lock housings, which will engage the center four corners of the two containers. Lower the outside flippers on the end corners of each container and hoist using the same procedures you would for a regular 40-foot container. Personnel carriers or man baskets are used to carry workers to the top of containers stowed on the deck. Some shoreside cranes have a guarded handrailed enclosure on the head block or spreader, and other cranes will attach a special personnel lift platform, commonly called a shoebox, to the crane spreader. When personnel are carried in a guarded handrailed enclosure on the head block or spreader, the entry gate or chain to the enclosure must always be secured before it is lifted. Never lift personnel who simply stand on the spreader and hold on. Never transport personnel if a container is attached to the spreader. When personnel are carried in a personnel lift platform or shoebox, other procedures are required. You will lower the spreader onto the shoebox and lock the twist locks before workers enter. Make sure workers are safely inside and the gate or chain is closed. Workers should tie off their safety harnesses to the shoebox and then signal that they are ready before you begin lifting. Hoist the shoebox slowly and smoothly. Trolley to the location where the personnel will be working and land the shoebox softly. If workers are aloft, use extra caution when landing the shoebox. Unlock the twist locks and raise the spreader away from the shoebox. Now you can move to work a different section of the ship. The shoebox will remain in position until the workers are ready to be relocated. If you will be waiting for the workers and will be keeping the spreader attached to the shoebox, you must disengage all crane controls. On some cranes, when you turn off the power to the controls, a warning light and or an alarm underneath the cab will indicate that the crane is off. Other cranes have a man aloft mode that will disengage the crane's controls for you. 
Whether lifting workers in a shoebox or in a guarded enclosure, do not lift more workers than is required to conduct the task at hand. Also, transport personnel only when it is necessary for operations, not simply as a convenience for workers to get on and off the ship. While transporting personnel, the signal person should remain in continuous communication with you, and you must remain at the controls. Sometimes bands use special effects to make a song sound better. And as a crane operator, you also have special tools you can use to lift things better. Special stevedoring gear is required for some types of cargo, such as steel, forest products, yachts, and heavy lift cargo. Stevedoring gear may include hooks, slings, shackles, tag lines, offset spreaders, emergency wires, cargo hook beams, boat cradle beams, and dumbbells. The gearman is responsible for inspecting and selecting the appropriate equipment. He or she is also responsible for its care, storage, and proper use. The heavy lift beam is used for cargo that cannot be lifted by a spreader and requires slinging. It is attached to the head block. Vertical or angled slings can be used with a hook attached to the heavy lift beam to lift cargo such as prepackaged lumber drafts, bundled steel, rail cars, and boats. Extra supervision is generally in attendance when specialized lifts are being done. When using a sling, watch the sling angle. A severe sling angle could cause the load to shift or slide during transport. Shackles are sometimes used to secure the legs of the slings into the crane's lifting assembly. Any shackles that are not seated properly or twisted should be straightened before a load is lifted. Tag lines should be attached to every lift made with the heavy lift beam and hook to prevent the suspended load from rotating and to help guide the load. The offset spreader is a very light, small spreader, specially designed to access difficult stowage positions on a ship. This spreader will be attached to the crane by mechanics. The offset spreader is primarily used to work around ship obstructions, such as the ship's gear or masts. When working with this spreader, you will need to use extra caution to avoid damaging the ship. Auxiliary gear is used to load or discharge oversized flat racks. Dockmen manually attach this auxiliary gear to the pad eyes on the underside of the crane's spreader, which are located near the spreader's corners. Wire ropes should not be wrapped around any structural member of the spreader for lifting purposes. Lifting gear must be shackled into pad eyes only. Be cautious when using gear suspended below the spreader as the suspended load will swing independently of the spreader when the crane trolleys or hoists. The load can swing one way while the spreader swings another. When placing the oversized flat rack into a cell guide in the ship's hold, make sure all corners are clear so that the unit can be lowered evenly. Be sure to follow the signal person's directions. You cannot have any protrusions when entering the tops of cell guides. If you do, the load may hang up in the cell. After the container is landed, it will have to be manually disconnected. Do not move the crane until clearly instructed to do so. When the container being transported with auxiliary gear is discharged onto a chassis, Dockmen will use a forklift with an appropriate personnel carrier to reach the gear to disengage it. Never take your eyes off the workers who are engaging or disengaging the auxiliary gear. Allow them to completely finish their task before you think of moving on. The boat cradle beam is used to only handle yachts or sailboats. Special padded slings are attached to the cradle and placed around the hull of the boat to be lifted. Do not rush when moving boats. Take it slow and easy so that the lift is completely under control. Make sure tag lines are used to control the boat's turning. 
Dumbbells are used when the spreader is unable to lock to a hatch cover or container. They are links that are manually installed between the spreader and the hatch cover or container. When using dumbbells, make sure that all four corners are properly latched and you get the signal before lifting the load. Occasionally, you will come across a damaged container that cannot be lifted in the usual fashion. Check with your supervisor for special instructions concerning the handling of any damaged container. Band members follow a set of security procedures and safety procedures to ensure our own safety. At a terminal, like at a concert arena, you and your team have to follow safety procedures to keep everyone unharmed. Some basic guidelines to follow are, make sure workers and vehicles are clear of the crane tracks when you gantry. Do not initiate any movement of the crane unless you are sure that it is safe to do so. Start all motions slowly and gradually increase speed. Make sure the spreader and load are raised high enough to clear any obstacles. Hoist ropes should be kept vertical. Do not pull a load sideways. Do not jerk loads. This will shock load the crane and hoist ropes. Stop the crane slowly at the end of travel and eliminate the swing. Never suspend a load over a person. Never carry personnel on the spreader or other parts of the crane unless in an appropriate personnel carrier. Stay in constant communication with the dock and deck crew. Contact maintenance when you have a problem with the crane. The safety of the crane, the operator, and the people working beneath it depend on proper crane maintenance. Although you are training to become a shoreside crane operator, there may be situations where you will be a pedestrian or will be working on the ground. There are special precautions you should take in these instances, which include the following. Never walk or stand under a load. Stay out of the crane's blind spots. Be sure to wear the PPE that is appropriate for pedestrians or ground personnel. A rock band never knows when they might encounter an unusual situation, like a power failure or a string breaking in the middle of a song, and that's why bands, as well as crane operators, need to expect the unexpected and know what to do in unusual situations. Weather is often a concern on marine terminals. Extra caution is needed during inclement weather. High winds are a special concern when operating a crane that can rise over 150 feet in the air. Cranes are equipped with an anemometer, which is a wind speed measuring device located at the highest point of the crane. Crane manufacturers typically determine the maximum wind speed at which the crane can be operated safely. If the wind exceeds the crane's wind speed limit, a wind alert alarm will sound, usually a blinking red light. This alert lets you know that the wind may be close to the shutdown speed. Generally, when the wind reaches the alert alarm speed, gantry travel must stop and the crane's securing devices will be prepared. Work may continue until the wind reaches the crane's shutdown speed. When working a ship in windy conditions, never try to hold the ship to the dock with the crane. If the wind reaches the crane's shutdown speed, any portion of the crane spanning or partially spanning a ship should be moved clear of the ship if it is safe to do so. The operator should bring the trolley to the trolley park position so he or she can get out of the cab and descend to the ground. The crane will be secured against travel by crane maintenance personnel. You may be requested to assist in this operation. Each facility's procedures for operating and securing the crane during windy conditions may vary slightly. Therefore, you should know your terminal's specific procedures. Snow, fog, rain, blowing dust, and even darkness can make hand signals difficult to see. Never ignore a hand signal or try to guess it if you do not understand what is being communicated. 
In icy and wet conditions, use extreme caution when climbing the ladder to the cab and walking on crane walkways. Even a little morning dew can make these surfaces extremely slippery. Glare comes from the sun shining on calm water beyond the docked ship. The glare can be tremendous at times, like sun shining on a mirrored surface. When you're facing glare, the pupils of your eyes automatically get smaller to reduce the amount of light entering your eye. When this happens, you cannot see in shaded areas or in the hold until your eyes readjust. Avoid looking into glare if possible. Work conditions at night are virtually the same as daytime conditions. Shoreside cranes have excellent lights that provide great illumination of the work area. If the lights on the crane are not functioning well, report it. As a crane operator, you must know your crane's emergency shutdown and evacuation procedures as determined by the crane manufacturer and your terminal. Know where all emergency stop buttons are located and use them only in an emergency. If a worker falls from the top of a container while he or she is tethered to the shoebox or to another container while working aloft, contact appropriate ground personnel immediately. They will direct the rescue operation communicating with you by radio. If another worker is tethered to the shoebox, he or she will be directed to unhook and go to the center of the container top and stand out of the way. Most likely, you will be instructed to engage the shoebox and under the direction of the stevedore or superintendent, the crane operator will then land the shoebox on the dock where the worker can obtain further medical evaluation and assistance if necessary. If a fire breaks out, stop the crane as soon as possible. Shut off the crane's control power by pressing the emergency stop button. Use the fire extinguisher only if it's safe to do so and seek assistance using your radio. Get off the crane using the ladders and stairs. Do not use the elevator. Report the incident immediately. In case you experience problems with the braking functions, press the emergency stop button and report the problem. If you suddenly become ill or disabled, attempt to hit the emergency stop button and, if possible, seek assistance. In the event of a hazardous material spill, stop the crane and follow instructions from appropriate personnel. After it has been determined that it is safe to do so, you may be asked to descend from the cab. However, sometimes your continued operation of the crane may be of assistance in minimizing the spill's impact. When the show's over and the crowds are all gone, there's still work to be done. Bands have to pack up their gear and get ready for the next show. Crane operators have to end their gig properly, too. End of shift procedures vary from crane to crane and from terminal to terminal. They also depend on whether or not another operator will take control or the crane will be shut down. If another operator will be taking over, this relief operator should contact you to advise that he or she is coming to the operator's cab. You should discontinue all operations, park the cab, exit, and meet the relieving operator on the access walkway. If the crane is equipped with a lockout feature, you should engage it so the trolley cannot move while operators are on the access walkway. On cranes without a lockout feature, the relieving operator should check that you are out of the operator's seat and push the emergency stop button if one is located at the trolley park position. Then enter the cab. You should inform the relief operator about any unusual conditions on the job or with the crane. As you leave, you will reset the emergency stop button, if there is one, at the trolley park position. Otherwise, the relief operator should allow you sufficient time to get fully off the crane before taking your place. If you will not be relieved by another operator or work on the ship has finished, raise the empty spreader all the way up Put the trolley at trolley park position and depart from the crane.
Crane maintenance personnel will raise the boom, ensuring that it is in the fully raised and latched position, shut down the crane, and prepare it for the next shift of work. If crane operators put the crane to bed at your terminal, your local training will explain these procedures in further detail. Be sure you follow instructions as to where the crane should be parked. Always be alert to the machine during your shift. Watch, listen, and feel for any problems. If you notice any defects or hear unusual noises coming from the crane, report it to crane maintenance before you leave. In this program, you learn the specific procedures for working a ship, how to handle special containers, and how to use special gear. We covered safety procedures and what to do during unusual operating conditions and emergencies. And finally, you learned how to end your shift properly. This three-part series on the safe operation of the shoreside container gantry crane is only part of your overall training program. Classroom and hands-on training will help you become familiar with the machine and how it functions. This additional training will allow you to put to use the information you have learned in this program and will help you become a safe, confident crane operator. Like operating a crane, being in a rock band means more than just showing up. Both crane operators and band members need a positive attitude. They need to keep their skills top notch and they have to know the importance of teamwork. Becoming a star in the cab is just as important as becoming a star on stage. It takes time and effort, but the rewards of a job well done will keep you flying high. Do old Charlie a favor. Work smart, stay safe on the job, and I'll see you at the next concert. Rock is done. We'll rock this joint tonight. Rock is done. We're gonna burn up the phone.